Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to a fresh update by RRG Research for Monday the 29th of May and I'm recording this on Friday the 26th uh, before the markets open actually. My name is Julius de Campenaar and I am presenting to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. We're going to take a look at the uh, current rotations in markets and see if we can make an assessment uh, on what's ahead for us. As usually, we start with an RRG of world stock market indexes. And um, as you can see, it's quite evenly spread, um, which is interesting because it gives us good trading opportunities because markets are not all moving in the same direction. And there is a clear definition or a clear distinction between the strength and the weaknesses in the various markets. And if we look at this, then it's quite obvious that um, the NASDAQ, that's NDI, is, is um, really, really strong and it's rapidly followed by the Japanese Nikkei index. Uh, and we're going to take a look at that index in a while because that is making a very interesting move. Now we've got the S&P moving along, uh, so a, still a concentration and we've talked about it for a while already. Um, US markets are picking up again and I think that trend is... Um, getting stronger. Uh, US is getting stronger around, against the rest of the world and especially against Europe. Because if we look at the European markets, then we've got the uh, stocks index right here, which is crossing from weakening into lagging this week. And here are the German DAX and the French CAC. They're uh, still in weakening, but they're moving towards that lagging quadrant. And the FTSE is already in there. Um, and here you see the Dow Jones index. It's, that's really lagging in terms of uh, US markets. So in the US, it's way better to be in the S&P and the NASDAQ than in the Dow Jones index. Um, and then we have the Indian Nifty, which is uh, at the lowest reading of the RS ratio scale on this chart, but it's picking up. So it's in the, in the early stages. And another one that's very interesting, I think, and we're going to look at that in a minute, is the Hang Seng Index in Hong Kong, which is now rapidly pushing further into the lagging quadrant. Now, this is all on a weekly time scale. If we move this to a little bit shorter term trading orientated RRG, then um, we got the confirmation that we're looking for. And if I stick with the Hang Seng, then you can see here how that um, rotated through improving and now back into lagging. And we know that that is the characteristic of a very um, strong relative downtrend. We also see the cluster of the European markets um, moving further down into the lagging quadrant. Here's the stocks. You see that the DAX is actually the best in Europe, although it's still not very strong. It is the, uh, it's one of the better markets in Europe. It is now rolling over. Here's the CAC, here's the FTSE. XJO is Australia, that's kind of like picking up a little bit, but not very much. <clears throat> and we have the confirmation of the US market. So here's the S&P now really moving into the leading quadrant. NASDAQ obviously still there. And look at the Nikkei, how that is moving into the leading quadrant way up to the top right. Finally, the, uh, the RRG that puts it against a 0% benchmark. All of the others were against the MSCI world. So that's all in a relative basis. And here you see... Um, absolute price trends and then you can see how the, the Nikkei and the Nasdaq are still holding up very well. Uh, Nifty is still in a relative uptrend but it's in a, in a price uptrend but it's losing a bit of strength. S&P making a little curl here but it's still inside leading so that's all good and the DAX has made that very rapid hook. Um, it means that it's still in that price uptrend but it's uh, it's losing momentum and the same goes for the s and for the stocks index that's all all these are already in uh, price downtrends based on this RRG let's take a, take a look at the um, at some of the individual charts so here's the Nasdaq and obviously that got pushed up uh, this week by a lot of uh, strong earnings numbers. Uh, I think in terms of the semiconductors, uh, Nvidia obviously blowing out everybody's expectations um, and that's driving up the Nasdaq. And what you see here is that the Nasdaq is taking out the previous high, which usually is taken as a strong sign and there is no reason to doubt whether it will be uh, this time. Um, the other one, uh, and Take a look at this because this is an interesting one. The other one, this, this, was, this is all daily charts, but for the Nikkei, I had to go to back to a, a weekly chart because this is breaking to, um, well, new highs, but it's definitely not new all-time highs because if you, <clears throat> if you scroll back the Nikkei to a really long-term history, now look at what's happening here. We go back 
to that is the early 90s um, for these levels. So we're, we're, we, we break here, we had this double top, we consolidate, and now we're breaking above that. So that means that the Nikkei is now well on the way to actually, um, this is the first little snippet of resistance here around 33,000. Uh, but the, 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 the real challenge obviously is that uh, 38, 39,000 level that was made in 1989 for the Japanese market. Um, this is really a, an important and strong sign with the Nikkei breaking above that overhead resistance level. And uh, I'm, gonna wa I'm gonna watch this move like a hawk because it gives a very good um, kind of low risk trading opportunity. The upside is plenty, what we've seen, and the support right here is now around 30, 3,500, 31,000. Um, so that's a very good risk reward ratio for a trade. If you look at the S&P 500, that's obviously running into resistance uh, from a relative perspective, as you can see here, it's doing really well, it's starting to pick up, but we would like to see the S&P breaking above 4200, 4220 to actually get uh, a little bit more new fuel to move ahead and, and take, that, uh, take a challenge to that high around 4330 that was set back in uh, 2022. If we go to uh, Europe, then uh, the things are reversing a little bit. The uh, stocks index seems to be completing a double top against resistance. So there is quite a bit of downside for the European markets available right now. Um, so here where we had um, uh, a low risk buying opportunity for the Nikkei index, it looks as if we're getting a low risk selling opportunity for the stocks index because the downside is wide open all the way down to four. 30. Uh, there is a bit of support here around 450, 448, but um, the signal was triggered around 458, 459. So that is now that can serve as a, a stop loss level on the upside. Uh, the DAX is is less bad or better, but lack of better wording than the stocks index. Uh, but you can see how it peaked against that overhead resistance. It's got a lot of trouble moving higher. We've got a little island here. That's usually not a very good sign. Um, and I'm watching here 15,675 as support for the DAX index. And um, if that breaks, then definitely the DAX is also in the boat of further declining prices. And we could even go down to 14,600. Now, the other index that I told you was very interesting is the Hang Seng index. Because remember how the Nikkei pushed to uh, a new high and opened up the way uh, for more upside potential. Look at what the, what the Hang Seng is doing. We had this nice rally here, but now we're breaking below this important support level. That was 18,900, say 19,000. And we're breaking that right now. And that opens up the way, that opens up the downside back towards 17,000, maybe even a little bit lower. And if you look at the RRG lines, you can see how, how the RS ratio line is already below 100 since February. Uh, it never really made it back up and now momentum is starting to roll over as well. So in Asia, we've got the Nikkei breaking to new highs, pushed by strong momentum and we've got the Hang Seng index moving to, um, well, not new lows, but, but breaking support uh, while uh, negative momentum, negative relative momentum is increasing. I think that's, these are the two markets that we really need to uh, be aware of. And then obviously we've got the, um, the spread between the US and Europe growing, but I think the Asian one is, is a lot more attractive from a trading perspective because there's way much more potential over there. We take a quick look at the, um, the New York FANG index. <coughs> we, we talk about that here in the show all the time. Uh, then we see that that is now running into resistance. You can see how Yes, the, uh, last week's bar was actually pushed higher. So this is um, this is Thursday on the back of Nvidia and AMD pushing really higher. Uh, we're running into resistance now for this group of stocks. And if we look at the weekly RRG, then we can see that it's actually the semi, so AMD, Nvidia, and then also Meta doing really really well on the right hand side. And all the others here are still on the on the left hand side. There's a few that are doing quite good. That's like Amazon, Google. Um, Microsoft, but you can see how these last observations are <coughs> really already starting to roll over a little bit. Netflix is an old one out. It's still way into lagging, but it's got a nice heading. And then we've got snowflakes moving into 
uh, Snowflake moving into uh, improving, but it's, it's at a very low reading on the RS ratio scale. And if we bring that to a daily RRG, then we can see that um, actually AMD and Nvidia are, are into the leading quadrant and pushing in there. So they're still strong, but you can see how Google is rolling over, how Netflix is rolling over, Tesla has got a little bit of trouble and how Snowflake is now rolling over rapidly into that weakening quadrant. Um, Meta picking up. So it's the, the, the image here, the universe here is getting a little bit more scattered. It's not as clear anymore as it used to be. And if we look at the individual charts, and obviously we need to look at NVIDIA and AMD and look at these charts, the, the downside risk is increasing. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you would see uh, at least a little bit of a correction back to the all-time high level here, which is around 335, or maybe even close the gap. So for uh, NVIDIA, great move, great stock. Uh, if it's part of your portfolio, I mean, there's no reason, there's no sell signal whatsoever for NVIDIA but the risks are clearly increasing because um, you know this is all downside potential. Uh, the upside is obviously there, but I'd be very careful with a stock like this. Uh, and the same goes to a lesser extent for AMD. Here we've got a nice rally, but you can see how AMD has not yet uh, by a mile reached its all-time high levels, which are back up to 165. There's a bit of upside potential left here to 125. But here also quite a big gap, um, which obviously increases the downside risk for a stock like Nvidia. For Google Meta, that's another story that I think is getting more interesting now. We've had that massive gap here, we've had a massive gap here, and now you can see how uh, Meta has entered the, um, the gap area that was set back in February 2022. The, um, the old high here, that old resistance level is now expected to start acting as support. So here in Meta, we've got actually a good, pretty good upside potential with limited downside risk. So um, compare that to the moves in Nvidia and AMD, and it looks like Meta is, uh, is holding up or, or providing better opportunities than those two, I think, at the moment. Let's quickly move to the Forex space to wrap up the show. And what we see here uh, is, in general, dollar strength. And uh, it's even better visible. This is the weekly RRG. But if you look at the daily RRG, then here is, here is the picture that is uh, speaking volumes. This is dollar strength. All these currency pairs or all these currencies expressed in the US dollar are now moving into the lagging quadrant. And that is an expression of dollar strength because the dollar is the center of the chart here. And if we look at the two charts that I think are um, worth watching most, that is Euro dollar, because we've seen how that has been struggling with that overhead resistance around 110, 111. And it's now clearly coming off that resistance area. We've taken out the, the the previous low here, there was another support level around 108, and it looks like we're now underway to 105. <clears throat> if we put this on a longer term time frame, I wouldn't be surprised if we could see US dollar going all the way back, or uh, the euro going all the way back to 95, 96 cents. Um, but I mean, that this the first move that I'm watching here is uh, back to 105, with resistance, uh, i.e. maybe stop loss area uh, around 108. But you can clearly see how this rally came into trouble, ran into trouble, never made it above 110, 111. Uh, and now the market has capitulated and um, uh, euro is weakening, dollar is strengthening, the ratio is moving down. If we bring that to the dollar yen and think about what we just said about the Nikkei chart, you can see how the dollar is now really strengthening against the, the, the Japanese yen. This is a really big base that we're taking out here. <clears throat> there is uh, there's a bit of resistance coming in around 142, but here also it looks as if uh, uh, the dollar is picking up a lot of strength against the yen uh, and the upside is uh, far greater than the downside risk, which is around 138 probably. That's it for this week. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the show. Thank you for watching. And uh, we're hoping to see you again uh, at a fresh update by RRG Research next week, same time, same place.